Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who brings us safely through the sea, who gives us water from the rock, who leads us into the land of milk and honey. Amen. Let us come home to God confessing our sin. Merciful Father, we have sinned against heaven and before you. We do not fully live as your sons and daughters. We use your gifts to our own ends. Forgive us and restore us that we may resist all that draws us away from you and be at peace with one another. Amen. We are reconciled to God through Christ. For his sake, God does not count our trespasses against us. Once dead in sin, we are now alive in God. Once lost, we are now found. God clothes you in the finest robes of all, the righteousness of Jesus Christ, forgiving you all your sins and making of you a new creation. Amen. The boundless grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, and the light of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord God, you led your people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide us now so that following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world toward the life you alone can give. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. You shall soon enter the land that the Lord God is giving you. You will take that live and land and live there. You will gather the crops that grow in the land of the Lord. You must take the first crops and put them in baskets. Then take that first part of your harvest to the place the Lord your God chooses to be his special house. Go to the priest that is serving at that time. Tell him, the Lord promised our ancestors that he would give us some land. Today I come to announce to the Lord your God that I have come to that land. Then the priest will take the basket from you. He will put it down in front of the Lord your God. Then there before the Lord your God you will say, My ancestor was a wandering Aramean. He went down into Egypt and stayed there. When he went there, he had only a few people in his family. But in Egypt he became a great nation, a powerful nation with many people. The Egyptians treated us badly. They made us slaves. They hurt us and forced us to work very hard. Then we prayed to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and complained about them. And the Lord heard us. He saw our trouble, our hard work, and our suffering. Then the Lord brought us out of Egypt with his great power and strength. He used great miracles and wonders. He did amazing things. So he brought us to this place. He gave us this land, a land filled with many good things. Now, Lord, I bring you the first harvest than the land you gave me. Then you must put the harvest down before the Lord your God and bow down to worship him. 
Then you must have a meal together and enjoy all the good things that the Lord your God has given to you and your family. You must share those things with the Levites and the foreigners living among you. Word of God, Word of Life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus returned from the Jordan River. He was full of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit led Jesus into the desert. There, the devil tempted Jesus for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing during that time. When those days were finished, Jesus was very hungry. The devil said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, tell this rock to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written in the Scriptures. It is not just food that keeps people alive. Then the devil took Jesus and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil said to Jesus, I will make you king over all these places. You will have power over them and will get all the glory. It has all been given to me. I can give it to any person I want. I will give it all to you if you will only worship me. Jesus answered, It is written in the Scriptures, You must worship the Lord your God. Serve only Him. Then the devil led Jesus to Jerusalem. The devil put Jesus on a very high place of the temple. He said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, jump off. It is written in the Scriptures, God will command His angels to take care of you. It is also written, Their hands will catch you so that you will not hit your foot on a rock. Jesus answered, But it also says in the Scriptures, You must not test the Lord your God. The devil finished tempting Jesus in every way and went away to wait until a better time. The Gospel of the Lord. A man was looking for help with a problem that he was wrestling with. So he turned to the Bible. He closed his eyes, opened up the Bible, and put his finger on the page. He opened his eyes and looked at where he had put his finger. And he read, and Judas went out and hanged himself. This did not help the man very much, but he thought he would try it again. He closed his eyes, opened up the Bible, and put his finger on the page. Again, he opened his eyes and read what his finger pointed at, and it read, Go thou and do likewise. I sometimes am skeptical about people who quote the Scriptures. Because as one who spends a lot of time with the Scriptures, I know one has to consider the context from where they come. And one must also consider what translation, what twist am I putting on the Scriptures? What do I want the Bible to say rather than, Lord, tell me what I need to hear? 
I once knew a man who was very much opposed to any kind of government welfare system. He would hold forth at great length about the foolishness of giving his hard-earned tax dollars to lazy people who didn't want to work. And to sum up his argument He would support it by quoting Scripture. Am I my brother's keeper? The implied answer to that was, no, I'm not my brother's keeper. Why should I have to pay for my brother? For his food and clothing and shelter when I work for it and he doesn't. But look at the context of that quote. Genesis 4. Cain and Abel, the sons of Adam and Eve, have offered their sacrifices before God. Abel's was accepted. Cain's was not. In anger... In jealousy, Cain killed his brother. God comes to Cain knowing what had happened and says, where is your brother? And Cain replies, I don't know. Of course he knows. But I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? We have to consider the context if we're going to be faithful in our use of Scripture. I'm also cautious because I read in our lesson today that the devil can quote Scripture. Jesus is fasting in the wilderness and He is hungry. So wanting to tempt Him, the devil comes and throws a series of accusations at Him. Tempts Him to act in ways that He knows He should not. First, He tries to sow doubt in Jesus' mind. If you are the Christ, if you are the Son of God, prove it to me. And prove it to me by using your power to take care of yourself. How often are our prayers desires for God to look out for me? Lord, give me a parking space. Lord, help me win the lottery. Lord, punish my enemies. We know all about looking out for number one. And we are tempted as believers to try to use God for those purposes. But knowing that Jesus is hungry, the devil says, if you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. You have the power, don't you? If you have the power, take care of yourself. Then he takes him to the high place and shows him the kingdom of the world and says, you can have all of this. You can have all the power. It's all been given to me, and I will give it to you if you worship me. Second notation. Evil always lies. 
Satan does not control all the power of the world. All of it does not belong to the evil one. And it is not his to give. But a good lie works any time, doesn't it? If it's going to get us what we want. Finally, he takes him to the top of the temple and says, again, if you are the Son of God, if you are, throw yourself off the temple. For it is written in the Scriptures that God will give His angels charge over you and they will protect you from harm. And Jesus reminds him, it is also written in the Scriptures, you must not tempt God. Look out for number one, if you are the Son of God. Luke tells us that having finished these temptations, the devil goes away and waits for another opportunity. That opportunity comes when Judas listens to the lies of evil and betrays Jesus. And the conversation starts again. Jesus, nailed to the cross, is mocked by the religious leaders who say, if you are the Son of God, we've heard that before, come down from the cross. Show us your power. Prove that you are who you think you are. If. You are the Son of God. So too, one of the thieves crucified with Him says, if you are the Son of God, look out for number one. Save yourself. And while you're at it, save us. Use power to take care of number one. But how does the Son of God show His power in serving others? I am among you, says Jesus, as one who serves. Jesus shows His authority not by lording it over others, but by using His power to serve others, to feed, to heal to clothe, to comfort. And to us is given power. But not power to look out for ourselves, but rather power to look out for each other and care for the very least among us. Have you ever met the devil? Have you ever looked Satan in the face? I remember one time when I very definitely did. I was on a tour of Ireland with a fife and drum corps that I belonged to. We had marched in the Dublin St. Patrick's Day parade. And that evening, we went to the great hotel in the center of town where the mayor of Dublin was having his St. Patrick's Day ball. We did what we usually do. We walked into the lobby of the the hotel and started to play. Experience had shown us that either we would get thrown out or somebody would buy us a beer. Well, we gathered a crowd that came to listen. And among that crowd were some very pretty Irish girls. Very pretty. One was giving me a lot of attention. 
and I liked it. But you see, I had just gotten engaged, just made a promise to a young woman that I would spend the rest of my life with her. Our bus driver, who was quite a character to say the least, saw what was going on and came over to me, bent over in my face and said, Luddy, you're 3,000 miles from home. Who's to know? Isn't that how evil works? It's not so much that evil says, disobey God, but rather evil asks questions. Well, do you really think you have to do this? Wouldn't it be easier if you didn't? Remember that the snake does not say to the woman in the garden, disobey God. Go ahead and eat the fruit. Rather, he engages the woman in a round of questions. Did God really say, don't touch that tree? Is God maybe keeping something from you that you really should have? Evil tries to call God into question if you are the Son of God. Prove it by looking out for yourself. People always ask me how that story worked out. Well, yes, I was able to resist temptation that time. But I haven't always been. There have been too many times when I have been willing to go along with the one who asks me questions rather than obey the one who leads me in the right paths. Because, you see, I am not God. I cannot resist temptation as strongly as God does in Jesus. It's why we pray Lord, save us from the time of trial. Lead us not into temptation because we cannot do it ourselves. We have one defense against evil when evil comes and says, you don't really have to obey that, do you? You don't really have to say no to that, do you now? And our defense is this. I am baptized. I am washed clean. I am a child of God. That is who I am. And that can never be taken away from me. Remember all the vampire movies? How do you make the vampire back down? with the cross, with the cross. Fear evil, because evil is real. Evil wears a suit. Evil comes bearing weapons. Evil comes and tells you, you can have your way. And evil always lies. Fear evil because it is real, but all the more strongly trust Christ and follow Christ who by His cross has overcome the evil one on our behalf. Amen. Hearing the call to return to the Lord, Let us join the whole people of God in prayer for all who cry out in pain and in hope. Gracious God, You look upon the world and You see suffering, pain, 
war. Evil winning. Some having far more than they could ever use. Others not having anywhere near enough. Let us be Your voice and Your hands that Your love and Your commands may be known in all the world. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, move the hearts of leaders in our cities, in our states, in our nation and in our world that they may do justice and love mercy and turn from war and evil. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift before You all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other struggle. Hear especially the persons and concerns we name before You now, aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, lead us on our Lenten walk that we may turn from all that tempts us to turn our back on You and follow You faithfully through bright places and dark, but only knowing that You are the One who leads us and will bring us to safe places and still waters. We lift before You all who have walked in faith before us and who have been our examples. May we be guided by them until we too are invited to the eternal feast. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. To You, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in Your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the Lord's peace. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are You for the birth of creation. Blessed are You in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are You for Your promise to Your people. Blessed are You in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are You for Mary's openness to Your will. Blessed are You for Your Son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which He was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to His followers saying, Take and eat. This is My body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of Me. Again, after supper, He took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ died. Christ is risen finish. We believe Christ will come down again. With this bread and cup, we remember Your Word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in His death and resurrection. We look with hope for His coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for Your Spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May Your Word take flesh in us. Awake Your people. 
Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Lord Jesus. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to Christ, broken and poured out for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, we thank you for gathering and feeding us as a mother hen embraces her young. Release us now to go on our way in these 40 days, ready to see our work as prayer ready to fast from complacency, and ready to share with those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the wisdom and power of Christ Jesus, and the light of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.